Hi, I'm Hans Wilhelm. There are a lot of esoteric and New Age teachings out there that claim that we are God. Or they say that God needs our human experience to explore his own magnificence in the world of contrasts and opposites. But is that true? In this new video, I want to explore this a little bit deeper with you. The God I know is the Father-Mother God, the highest intelligence that is the source of infinity and of all creation, whom I, of course, will not even attempt to illustrate. His creation is the seven-dimensional pure heavens, which I will symbolically sketch out here, besides the central sun, the seven surrounding spiritual realms with their prismatic suns, and all their various subheavens, all the ethereal cosmoses, galaxies, suns, and planets. They are all teeming and alive with their mineral kingdoms, plant kingdoms, animal kingdoms, nature spirit kingdoms, and finally the most glorious spirit beings, the divine sons and daughters of God, created out of pure light ether. This is a very rough sketch of your and my true home, our origin, the absolute reality. I cover this in much greater detail in several of my other videos. At no time did or does God forget himself just so that he could be any of his own creations. He does not need to because he is the omnipresent essence, the all spirit, in all of his creations. So what is then the purpose of his creation? It is eternal and infinite expansion and evolution. I know it's difficult for us to comprehend infinity and eternity because our mind works with limitations so that we can understand and organize things better. But the divine creation is in a state of exponential, perpetual motion and continuous expansion and evolution. And being actively involved in all the many aspects of the evolution of the various life forms and cosmoses with all the galaxies, suns and planets is the joy, the bliss, the desire, the ecstasy and the expression of selfless love of all his divine spiritual children. That process of continuous evolution does not require destruction, pain, evil or any survival of the fittest concepts, which is a demonic concept. Here, in the pure heavens, it is a very gradual, love-filled and totally harmonious, never-ending process. A long, long time ago, you and I have been part of this magnificent, divine and joyful process. Unfortunately, there were lots of angels, or divine spirit beings, who misused their God-given freedom and free will and separated themselves from the pure heavens, the absolute reality. The world calls this momentous event the fall of angels. By leaving the pure heavens, these divine beings entered the fall worlds or false spheres, which is the relative or temporary reality, the realm of time and space and of contrasts or opposites like good and evil, victim and victimizers and so on. And with it, they fell under the satanic law of sowing and reaping the karmic law of cause and effect. Every time any of these divine beings used their own free will against the law of selfless love, they created karma that eventually comes back to them as learning tools, a lesson of self-discovery and purification. Depending on the intensity of the misuse of the free will, these karmic lessons can be very severe. In our material world, they can be from illness, blows of fate, pain, suffering, loneliness, to rape, torture, and even murder. All these experiences are effects of misuse of our free will and causes set in motion mostly by the soul who acted against the law of love. So let me be very clear on this. It is not some God who is forgetting who he is just so that he can experience poverty, slavery, torture, rape, misery and everything else that humankind is capable of doing to themselves and to each other. No, these are the karmic effects of causes set by us humans resulting from the satanic law of sowing and reaping. Again, the Creator Father Mother God does not need to experience these horrors so that he can explore his magnificence. 
This whole fall region was never the intention of God when he created the pure heavens. The fall regions are the result of the rebellious angels, the divine beings who left the pure heavens and whose main goal was to undo God's ethereal and eternal creation. God permitted the departure of these angels because he had given them freedom and the free will which allowed them to eventually misuse it and to proceed as they did. As we know, the law of love and God never interferes with our free will and our freedom. On the contrary, the Creator, the Father, Mother God, wants us children to return home as soon as possible on our own decision and free will. For this reason, He has sent legions of angels into the four worlds as prophets and guides to teach, to help, and to lead His rebellious children home as fast as possible. When that happens, all these four worlds will dissolve again and be absorbed back into the pure heavens. Then the fall of angels will have been nothing but an unintended disturbance or ripple in the ever-expanding and infinite creation. I don't know about you, but I would think it would be an insult to tell a person who is going through some really rough times, that this is just God experiencing himself through him so that God can see how it feels to be lonely, raped, hungry, rejected, sick, hopeless, and worse. And we are eternal beings. That means that we will not eventually dissolve in some cosmic divine energy field or God energy as suggested by some esoteric teachings. We are also not God which so many New Age teachings proclaim. God is holy, but we are divine and eternal beings. None of us is omnipresent intelligence. Neither have we willed ourselves into existence. We are not that powerful. We cannot even lift our little finger without the divine power of God. We can only live, feel, think, speak and act through the all-power God, through love. The danger is that a person who believes that he or she is God could get away with murder. After all, if they think they are God, then they would not feel responsible to anyone else or someone higher than themselves for their actions. They would not feel guilt and no remorse for whatever horror they created. This is a typical behavior of narcissists, sociopaths and psychopaths. But at the core of our being, God is in each and every one, in every part of creation. So we are never alone or abandoned by God. We are in God, God's Spirit, and God is in us as we are the temple of God. And the God I believe in is best suggested in the famous parable of the prodigal son. That father very reluctantly lets his son go into the world where his son promptly gets totally lost in the worldly temptations. Eventually, the son realizes his mistake and returns home. When the father sees the son, he is jubilant and welcomes him with tears of joy and open arms. That is a more comparable sentiment of the father-mother God, the eternal, when we also eventually return and hear the words, Welcome home, my son. Welcome home, my daughter. Sorry, I know it's great to imagine that we are God, but that idea usually comes from our bloated ego. Reality is different and it requires a little bit of humility to understand that we can only think, feel, speak and do anything with the divine power of God. Without it, we can't do anything. It has been really great to have been with you again.